Hey, this is Rob Onsbach, and welcome to another edition of E-Heroes. Now, today's E-Heroes is the special 100th episode. I know, it's, it's crazy. But I have Courtney Buford from Vegas, who is one of the, I think, one of the most respected real estate professionals, you know, around. And, you know, how I got to meet Courtney, as we'll explain, was this guy right here. Now, you probably can't see him. <laughs> that guy. But I'll, you know, his name is Steve Sims. And if you go back to my episode seven, you'll get the, you know, you can listen to the, the interview I had with Steve, but Steve is just a fantastic guy. So let's not talk about Steve at the moment. Let's talk about Courtney. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. We can talk about Steve because Steve is the glue that brought us together, right? He's the gift that keeps on giving. He's the yeah. reason why I can get on a, a podcast and not cry and be afraid. Uh, uh, he's the funny thing is, and, and, uh -huh. and the first time we met, you know, I, and I can, I can visually see this all over again, you know, <laughs> you and I were in the lobby of ManyChat in San Francisco. Yeah, I don't know if I said something. I brushed up against you, and you looked at me and you said, "You're an asshole," and I just responded, <laughs> "Yep." <laughs> I don't even remember that, but it sounds like me. <laughs> and you know, after that, we became we became kind of besties. I mean, we we we, we chat on the phone or not on oh, the phone sorry. on on Facebook, and yep. and you know, we don't always agree on certain things, and as most people don't, for sure. But you know, we don't we don't throw insults back and forth of each other. You know, we, we hash it out We try to look at each other's point of view. And, you know, and I think that's what makes you great at being who you are, because, you know, as a realtor in, in Vegas, you probably come across all kinds of people. Yeah, Vegas is kind of, you know, if I, of course, the United States is a melting pot. But if I had to say one of the states in our union is uh, a melting pot, it would be Las Vegas. Everybody comes through here. Uh, we have people from all over the world. Um, Vegas is a young town. I mean, it doesn't have the same history as, say, New York or basically any place uh, back east. But uh, <coughs> Vegas is a great place. It's a wonderful place. I grew up here. I, spent, I moved here when I was 11 years old. I've uh, been here 37 years. And um, I don't think I'd live anywhere else. I love our town. I really do. You know, and I think most people have that uh, preconception or notion that, Vegas is just the strip, right? You know, and and and, and I, I spoke there a couple of times in 2014. I haven't been back. Um, you know, I, I didn't see a show. I, I I didn't see a lot of the things that that people normally do when they go to the strip. For sure. But, but it's more than that. I mean, Las Vegas is is more than just the strip. In fact, most sure. people who live there never visit the strip anyway. For sure, without a doubt. In fact, uh, we avoid the, the strip like the plague, unless it's part of your business, of course. You have people in town, you know, I've got a Rolodex of reasons why I can't go to the strip to meet you because I don't like the strip. I love it because it brings revenue to our city and it's a big part of who we are. I mean, it's our big banner. It's our shining star and and we love it. Um, but man, I'm, I'm almost 50 now. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on that strip and I'm just done, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that's for the youngsters and for uh, folks from out of town. But it, it, you know, outside of uh, the strip, there's absolutely a, a town and a city and a a community of people that that do look out for each other. You know, especially in this pandemic situation. I don't want to get into that too much, but I will say, I feel like us as a city will bounce back very quickly. We always do. We're very resilient, um, and I think that there's a very strong sense of community in our town. Yeah, you know, and 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 the. You know what? What I think is, is struck me as as cool about what you do is that you're always in front of the video. You know, you're always educating somebody on whether it be a property or whether it be a, a new construction. And and I have never seen you talk about the strip at all. Yeah, and it's funny too. You mentioned me always being in front of the video, but that literally is a, that's a new thing. That's probably as old as I've known you, which is last what was that October? <laughs> It was November. last October is when I did my very first video, and it was because of uh, the conversations I had had with Steve, and I just started using it to leverage my business, and it was not easy, and it's still not easy, but it gets more and more comfortable. You get more comfortable over time. Yeah. Um, it's a great tool, and I, I love using it. And Yeah, in answer to your question, I don't speak of the strip very much because I want people to know this is a place you can raise your children. This is a place that uh, you know has parks and 
hiking and fishing and we're three hours away from Utah and I love to go there that we've got the seventh I think the seventh best trout fishing stream in Utah, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Um, and we're right, right down the street from Arizona. We're right down the street from LA. The good thing about Las Vegas is that it's kind of a hub city for all these other different areas. I used to go to Colorado to fish as well. So there's a lot in a very small, tight little area. You can drive there within five to 10, you know, five and 10 hours. You can be in Utah, uh, Colorado, Arizona, you know, and the list goes on. So it's, it's a great place. So, that transition from getting into video, was it tough mm -hmm. for you or was it something that uh, you had to emotionally overcome? Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> I don't like the way I sound. I still don't like the way I sound, Rob. I think that I sound completely different than I sound over video and you just kind of have to get over it. And that's kind of, you know, who helped me with that is uh, Dennis Yu, one of the, our speakers at the very first speakeasy that we met at. Um, a very, very well, a man that's very well versed in social media in general. Um, but, you know, I just kind of sucked it up and said, you know what, if I really want my business to grow, if I really wanted to make a difference, be impactful, um, that's where I had to start. And it, it, the timing couldn't have been better because, you know, what, six months later, boom, we're on lockdown, so, which gave me a ton of time because as a real estate agent, uh, we we're considered uh, essential because people do still need a place to live at the end of the day. And it, some people have situations where they have to move. So. Um, I was still on the street, still working, and people were not out as much. So the video was a way for me to bring my business to them without them having to leave. And it just worked out well, man, from there. I, I started using video in 2010. Oh, is that right? But, you know, prior to that, you know, one of my first businesses back in, in 1989 was a video photography business. So okay. for me, I've always been behind the camera, not always in front of the camera. Sure. And... Uh, so in 2010, when I started using video to promote everything that I was doing, I would say the first 300 videos sucked. <laughs> <laughs> the first 300? Man, you know what the worst part is? The retakes. The retakes for 20 seconds of information and the sweating and the lighting and the the whole thing, man. It's nerve-wracking. Uh, I, I don't even – I'm not even concerned about that anymore. I just – Right. Exactly. You know, I, I just do it, and if I if I flub, whoop de doo I just keep it on – It is what it is. And, right. yeah, because you know, most people on, on social media want to see you. They want to see you, the real you, the, the raw you. Yeah, well, and, I and And I think that's the hardest thing for people to overcome is the mistakes. Yeah. And, and they just don't want to let them go. And, and for me, I just said, you know what? It's going to happen, and I've made mistakes on 300 videos. I'm going to continue to make mistakes. I can't yeah. keep spending all this time editing. I, I, I don't have time no. for that. No, you don't. You don't. And you can get – it's very easy to get into that to the point where you're gridlocked and you're not doing anything, and that's exactly what you don't want. I remember uh, talking to my business partner, Daryl, about video literally, God, I want to <laughs> say eight years ago. And even before that, I worked for a company called uh, Expert Internet Marketing, which built websites. And my friend Gary was like, listen, man, video is the wave of the future. You got your license. Let me help you do some videos. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll get to that. And here we are, 2020. That was like 2000. I don't even know what it was. It was 12 years ago, 11, 12 years ago. And I was afraid of it. And had I started then, I'd probably be, you know, much obviously better off now. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, and what, what gets me is that, you know, you say that you're afraid. But. You know, I know that you do martial arts on the side. And I there's, do. There's nothing that, that makes you afraid when you're in martial arts and you're wearing your, your uniform and you're competing against someone, but you're afraid to be behind the camera. Yeah, but here's the thing. Okay, so I'm not afraid to compete. That's a little nerve wracking, but I don't allow my friends or family to watch me compete. <laughs> Because the and the funny thing about it is, you know, and I, I've been doing this since I was a kid. I started grappling when I was 12. Uh, I wrestled in, in high school and, and even after high school. Uh, and I had people come watch me then. My friends were always there. Never bothered me. But with age comes awareness, comes, uh, you know, uh, just scrutinizing yourself to death. Kids don't care, right? Kids don't care. They just do their thing. And I I, I, I envy that. But um, and I wish I still had some of that with me. But I'm getting it back slowly but surely. Yeah. And and and, the, and I think that's, that's the point that you have to... to to know kids don't care. They and don't. Can, and when we can turn ourselves into that kid and say, I don't care, you're going to free yourself from a lot of that emotional stuff 
that's yeah. crippling you from, you know, running a better business. Yeah. And you're, you're yeah. Like, people say get out of your own way so often, but that is so true with pretty much everything. Get out of and, your own and way. And I think that's why, you know, I became very sarcastic in what I do because, you know, <laughs> I look at, I look at life and I'm like, screw it. I don't care. Right. You know, and right. because I was allowing all these things to compile on me, to stress me out. And yeah. I'm like, this is crap. I don't like how I feel. I don't like how I'm acting. I don't like not making any money. Right. Uh, and, I, and I don't like being, being, you know, put down. And I'm mentally, I'm putting myself down. For and, sure. And, and not being able to put out content. Right. For sure. Um, so, yeah. You have to you, remember, you know, I think that's what I like about you, Rob. You know, at first, when we became friends on Facebook, I mean, you were pretty quiet at the speakeasy. But then I see you on Facebook. I'm like, this guy is pissed every day. I mean, everybody pisses him off. Waking up pissed him off. Yeah, but I love the fact that you're unapologetic about it. I love the fact that you're comfortable in your own skin. Because the truth of the matter is that everybody is not your person, right? Yeah. Everybody is not your audience. Everybody's not your client. Everybody's not your customer. You have to find those people. And that's where authenticity comes into place. If you're really, truly not worried about all the flubs through your video and the this and the that, and just concentrating on just giving people what they need, helping people, and being yourself, that's where you start winning. That's when you start attracting the people that are going to support you and do business with you and, and be friends with you and, and, and so forth. So, you know, it's a great skill. It's, it's, it's something that everybody yeah. doesn't have in the have <clears throat> You know, and, and, and the funny thing is, is that, you know, when I started uh, not caring. Right. And I, and I don't want to say that in a, in a, um, in a uh, negative way. Right. But. You know, the world comes to you differently. And when, you know, you're not people pleasing 100% of the time, mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're eliminating all the pain in the ass people that enter your life, that just kick your tires, they don't want to give you any money, they don't want to give you business, they waste your time. Right. You're, you know, and, and you apply that to your business and you end up pre-qualifying all these people that maybe aren't a good fit. For know? sure. To get to that one or two person that, you know, out of a hundred that is, that they're going to make your business so much more profitable. They're going to make your life more enjoyable. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, great. I have to piss off a few people to get to that place. But, you know, I think that we as a society have created too many entrepreneurs that say yes to people. Right. Well, I think, you know, you, you can't lose your message in, in the, you know, in trying to convey it to everybody. You know, I'm the one thing about my real estate career and just my, you know, building my business in general is that I, I used to speak or, or listen to a lot of real estate coaches. I was constantly focused on, you know, Tom Ferry or Mike Ferry or this one or that one, mm -hmm. Brian Buffini. Um, but I've found and through Steve again, you know, I only <laughs> give him to remind me not to mention him again, because I don't want to give him too much love. Right. So, what I've learned, though, is that real estate is just marketing mm -hmm. and marketing is something that everyone can everyone uses day to day. I mean, everybody, including the kid at the McDonald's. So right. marketing is what's important. So those are the kind of people that I follow. And those are the people I'm finding that are helping me kind of grow into a better business person, a better realtor and and just sharpening my focus and narrowing it down and and not trying to talk to everybody because I'm not trying to talk to everybody. These are the people I want. I don't want these people. Right. You know and, what I mean? And, and there's and there's certain types of homes that you want to list more. Correct. Than, you know. Of course. I mean, the, the day one, it was like, you know, if it has an APN number, I want to sell it. Yeah. But now I'm trying to kind of refine those things. And it's not, you know, I love working with people. For, I mean, because I'm a military brat, I love VA loans. I like working mm -hmm. with the military people. I like people within my own neighborhood or people just on this part of 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 the city. And that's kind of where I'm trying to focus my business is specific parts of the city. And it's not, uh, it's just, it's a proximity thing for, you know, for the most part, it's the type of product. And I know the product. Well, I've lived here forever. You know, I, I remember when it was a dirt lot and now it's completely congested and we're almost hitting the mountain here in Vegas. We're almost out of land, uh, in a lot of places and we're kind of getting wider and wider. So, but see, you, um, you because you've lived in the area. Yeah. Stories. Yeah, and you can convey those stories to people. Yeah. And when people come to you, they trust you because of those stories. 
Correct. Absolutely. Yep. And I, I didn't, I don't think I pulled from that in my initial, uh, you know, dealings with trying to get business going early on, but now that I'm more comfortable in my own skin, it, it's easier for me to kind of show people, that, especially people that are coming from out of town. I mean, I can literally tell you, you know, we used to drive up here and shoot guns at the top of the street. Now there's, there's tons of homes here. That's no longer, you know what I mean? It's th that kind of stuff. So you can't shoot guns there anymore. <laughs> no, you can't, but there's other places. Believe me, we get it done. So, so you know, it's how a little hot for it now the, though. Uh, how does the, the videos help you uh, build your brand and, and build that trust? You know what? We, 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 <sighs> I guess the easiest way of putting it is that we we try to touch our clients or people that we're trying to do business X number of times a year. Mm -hmm. So that might be me commenting on your Facebook page. That might be me sending you a personal note. That might be me calling you, shooting you a text. The video is just me touching you. All right. Number one. And, and I started thinking about this in more in depth just the other day. And now I do a lot of video on new home communities. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking, well, gosh, well, should I really be focusing that much on new homes? And then I started thinking about, well, the new home communities are the neighborhoods of, you know, 10 years from now. So now my 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 knowledge of those areas is now expanding just by default, just simply for me trying to get in your home and get uh, attached and get you have you engage with me. I've now increased my product knowledge. So it's a win win, man. I mean, and I like it. That's the funny thing. This morning, I woke, I woke up at three thirty this morning. Uh, did a bunch of seminar stuff online, trying to figure out some YouTube things. And then I got my car and I shot out to uh, do some drone footage for another video I'll be doing today. And I enjoy that. Like that, I don't mind getting up for. So that's why, how I know I'm doing what I should be doing because it doesn't hurt, right? right? I'm not laying in bed like, oh, God, it's Monday. Because quite frankly, every day is Monday for me. I work every day. <laughs> you know, if they call, I'm coming. So, you know, that's just the the nature of the beast. I know the last time I was in Vegas, it was uh, it was unreasonably hot, and and as soon as you walk out of the hotel, you start melting. I mean, <clears throat> I guess that's one of the drawbacks of living there. Uh, yep. But you know, everybody has pools. They do. They do. It's painful here. That I mean, I like I said, I've been here a very long time. I'm still not used to it. It is <laughs> painful. And the reason I really go, I mean, and just to keep to be clear, the reason I went out and did my drone footage at six in the morning is because if I go anytime after 10 a.m., it's so hot. I literally set the drone on the ground and I turn on my uh, remote and it says it's overheating. Like by the time I hit the button, I mean, it's that quick. It's that hot here. I think yesterday was like 114, which is it's normal for us. So you do most of your work in the morning and then maybe in the evening. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's all day. Um, but I try to pick and choose when I have to be outside. I mean, obviously, sometimes you can't avoid it. But earlier, the better. Um, I typically train jujitsu a few times uh, a week around 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. And then I'll start back working again after that. Um, but I do morning, my morning stuff, hit the gym, then do my my evening stuff. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about jujitsu. And and. How did that make you a better real estate professional? Uh, well, in a couple of ways. I mean, the reason I even started in the first place is because I was was heavily overweight. I was almost 300 pounds. Um, and my doctor told me that I was pre-diabetic and I needed to lose some weight. Well, I've been in a motorcycle accident a few years back and I can't run. I mean, I literally am not able to run. I've got some torn cartilage on one of my knees, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So... I used to wrestle in high school, and so jujitsu was a good fit. I had a friend that's a black belt up in Utah. Uh, he pointed me in the direction. I walked in one day, and um, I never left. I mean, that, and I'll tell you the way that it helps me, not just in business, but in just life in general. Jujitsu is all about being uncomfortable, being comfortable in being uncomfortable, if that makes sense. So um, when things are tough, when things are stressful, so forth, you have to kind of figure out your way piece by piece out of that situation. And you have to be present in the situation. Someone's trying to choke you or break your arm. You're going to pay attention. You don't have a choice. Right. So, and that's why the other reason why I like jujitsu is when I'm there, I'm not thinking about anything else except for what I'm doing at that moment, which is liberating and which, you know, I had surgery last year and I wasn't able to train for about seven or eight months. Uh, and I felt the difference just in my attitude and just my anxiety levels and so forth. So I know I need it. I absolutely need it. And it's a great outlet. And I've met such great people. I mean, really good people. Probably my best friends are the guys at the gym, guys and ladies at the gym, uh, aside from my very other other tight friends. So, yeah.
you know, was there a moment when you started taking jujitsu where, you know, someone smaller than you took you down? Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> That's that the funny part. That's the beautiful thing about jujitsu. And I, and I have to remind myself, uh, you're not 25, dude. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I train with these younger kids and they're half my size and they run circles around me and I don't care. I still come back. I love it. I'm not particularly great at it, but I enjoy it and it helps my head and my heart. And I, yeah. I appreciate it. For yeah, sure. no, and, and, you know, people make fun of me because, you know, uh, I like to lawn mow. I, I, you know, I go out and push, push mow my, my yard. Uh -huh. it's, my, it's my outlet. It's, it's right. I, I get my exercise. I get my, you know, hour and a half of, of just thinking. I put my headphones on, play yeah. my music and just thinking. And, and my wife and kids are like, but dad, you can pay a service to do that. I said, yeah, right. I could. But then I'm not going to get my exercise. I'm not going to get my outlet. I'm not going to. And, you know, it's, it's just my time away from not thinking about business. For sure. For sure. And you need that to be better, too. You need that those mental breaks. I, I don't know. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've been stuck at something, walked away from it, come back. I'm better. I'm ready to tackle it with a fresh perspective. And I think that's necessary for anyone in business. You have to. You have to have those that balance. Um, you know, I, I say that, but I, I work all the time. <laughs> but I, I, I try to balance as much as I possibly can. And I'm sure you do, too. You know, how did uh, and I know we don't want to talk too much about COVID, but it did change uh, the way businesses do things, especially, I think, in the real estate business with viewing homes, selling sure. homes. Yep. And I, I, you probably did more electronic stuff. You did, you're doing more things that you didn't do before. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually fortunate in that respect because I, basically everything I do is electronic signatures, things like that. That's already that stuff was already in place. I think the the place where I want is like where I was telling you before with already having the gear and the equipment necessary to start doing videos and to kind of keep myself busy. Because when COVID first hit and they put us under quarantine, it was scary for everybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you support. I don't care what you think about. Uh, the political climate. Now, initially, everybody shut up and got back in the house. I mean, no one thought it was a conspiracy theory. And the phone stopped ringing. And I was concerned. I was very concerned, just like everybody else. I'm thinking, well, wow, I'm 47 years old. Uh, I've already reinvented myself more times than I can count. I don't have the energy to do this again. Like, what am I going to do this time? So there was a little bit of fear there. And that's why I, that's when I hopped in my car and I went to, and I couldn't even get into a lot of the, the housing tracks to even do videos, but some of them I could. And so I went to everyone as, as many as I could. I did, got as much content as I could, brought it all back to the house. And I just started editing and I didn't even know how to edit actually at that point. That's when I learned because I had so much time on my hands. Yeah. I just used that time to do that. And I started buying, I started buying courses um, you know, and that's the other kind of thing that, that's, that Steve has kind of brought to, to, to my life is books, reading more, learning more. You know, I woke up this morning at 3.30. That wasn't on purpose. I don't sleep very well, but I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm already up now. I might as well learn something. So I grab my phone and I'm starting, I'm looking at this course, just trying to constantly feed myself stuff to make my life easier, to make my business grow and to make it, uh, you know, better for, for my clients. I, I, I want to be the best that I can possibly be. Well, that's how I basically did things. And, and you know, I, I was learning all these things. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is great. But I need to start leaving my legacy, my mark on the world. Yeah. So I started writing books. And, and we just produced our 28th book in seven years. And That's and, insane. Uh, you know. Yeah, when Steve but, said that you had written, like, I think at the time it was 26. Was it 26 that you had under your belt? Uh, and, uh, probably 25 when, when we did speakeasy and then okay. I, I did the, the Rob versus the morons. And then I just did Rob versus humanity. And I just did, uh, uh, two books for, uh, two lawyers. And uh, now I'm writing another book for another lawyer. <laughs> yeah. That's insane, man. And I, I got to tell you, I respect the hell out of it. Cause and, I know and, it's and not an know, easy thing. The funny thing is, is a lot of the stuff, uh, is recycled material. Really? Like it's stuff I've already shared out on Facebook or, or on my blog or somewhere else. Right. Um, you know, now for the lawyers, a lot of that stuff is stuff I've already written for them. Right. We recycled it. We repackaged it. Uh, one of the books I just wrote for uh, a lawyer was we, we helped him create his podcast last year. We took okay. the first 52 episodes and that became his book. So now oh, nice. he has a podcast. He has a book with all the podcast episodes. 
but they're reassembled that flow better. And, uh, you know, he can share them out. So a lot of people aren't going to, you know, they might not read your book or they might not go to your podcast. Right. But by giving them something that they can actually take with them. For sure. You know, for sure. Um, and, and so lawyers love it because every time they get a new client, they can send them a book. And right. Then, you know, the people are going to read through that book and they're going to they're gonna feel more comfortable, you know, trusting that lawyer because now they have a book. They, they've learned a little bit more about the, their situation, you know, what can happen. Um, you know, and, and I think real, real realtors, real estate professionals need to have some type of book where they're educating people. Maybe it's on the town. Maybe it's on their service. Maybe it's on the process. Right. It's on, these are the types of homes that we offer. Right. You know, or different tips on, you know, how to select carpet, paint, windows. You, you know, know, the funniest thing, Rob, is I, I find, and you're right about that, 100%. So the thing I forget is that I have to make sure that I understand that people don't know what I, I take for granted that people already know what I'm already thinking. You know what I mean? I've been doing this a while. So I assume they know this is what you have to do for that. And I'm wrong. And I have to remember that you almost have to spoon feed it to people so that they can, they can grasp it and understand the concept because they don't do this every day. And, and, you know, one of the things I always tell people, you know, Take the first 50, you know, commonly asked questions that people always ask you. Turn them into videos. Right. You know, because when people are searching, uh, you know, for any subject in Vegas, you know, when it comes to real estate, they're going to come on your videos. They're going to yep. start to see. They're going to start to trust you. You've just answered their question. Yeah. You know, now you're the first person in their mind that they're going to contact when they buy, go buy a house, sell a house, rent a house. Whatever they want that's to do. the goal. I'm not quite there yet, but that's 100% of the goal is just to, to, to breed trust. I mean, familiarity breeds trust. So, you know, they don't know me. I'm not in their house. You know, they, they don't know me from Adam. And quite frankly, there's a ton of real estate agents. In fact, I think there's 17,000 in our town alone. Now, mind you, only 1% of that number does all the work. But still, that's a lot of competition. And there's some good, solid realtors, including the ones on my team. Uh, I have, I'm on a team of, uh, I think there's seven of us that sell, um, and we all push each other. We we basically compete, and we we brag when we win, and we cry when we lose, you know, um, but that's what makes you better. That's what, I think, perpetuates you, the greatness. You need someone to chase, and you need someone chasing you. Yeah. Um, I think that's a healthy environment. At least for me, it is. Well, you know, here's the thing is that, you know, you have 17,000 people that are trying to sell real estate, but none of them are like you. None exactly of them do right. what you do. Right. So 100%. as long as you can convey your superpower to someone else, they're more likely to hire you versus those other 17,000 people. You're 100% right. You know, the biggest thing I had to get past was everybody's not your client. Every deal is not yours to be done. And that's okay. There's tons of business for everybody. You know, uh, I know lots of realtors I would refer my, my personal business to if I wasn't in you know, the business I'm in, but um, there's a lot of good ones out there. There really are, which yeah. is good because you have to be that much, you have to be that much better to compete, you know? So how do people find you? Where do they go? Uh, you can be, find me on Facebook, uh, uh, Courtney Sells Las Vegas, uh, Facebook dot Courtney Sells Las Vegas. And then you can find me on Instagram at Courtney Sells Las Vegas to you. Uh, and I also have a YouTube channel. And it's just my name, Courtney Buford. There you go. And I'll list. There One of them down here uh, when when the, this goes out to YouTube. Now, people that are seeing this or hearing this on, on the podcast, you know, you won't see the link, but you just have to, you know, rewind. And I'm going to have to trust you, Rob. <laughs> uh, people will find you. <clears throat> Absolutely. I hope so. You know, they'll, they'll, you know, and the funny thing is, is I, I've always, you know, you know, I can't say always. I used to worry. I don't worry anymore. Right. Uh, I, I think that over the years that, uh, you know, I, I do what I can do. And right. basically, I know that I'm the only one who does what I do in the capacity that I do it. Right. So to say that I have competitors, uh, no, I, there's people that try to do what I do. Right. Uh, I get what you I get what you mean, because you are in a mar in a business that you're right there. You have a lot of counterfeiters out there, so to speak, and I and I, I can appreciate that. You know, and I and I don't try to point fingers at them. 
Right. I do laugh at them sometimes. Um, but when I do call them out, I do try to, you know, take their name out. Uh, you know, I might say, hey, you know, person A. Right. Um, because, you know, I, I, one of the things I try not to do is ever talk negative about my competition or people, you know, perceived as my competition. You're 100% right. You know, you can't I'll win that say, way. I just say, you know, I, I, I don't know much about them. Right. Uh, but you'll have to go Google them. <laughs> Which, right. You know, you know and, and I wish you the best. <laughs> yeah, unless they're Googling you and that you're the only one that shows up. You know, when they Google me, I, you know, I. I there's, there's seems to be a bunch of Rob Unspot clones out there, which. Well, I've created three of them, so you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, we're twins. You can't even tell us apart. <laughs> no doubt. But anyway, this was great. And, you know, I appreciate the time. And Of and course, man. Thank you so much for having me. This is actually the first time I've ever been on a podcast. I actually bought this, uh, this background just for it. Because uh, there's a bunch of books and nonsense back there, only anybody to see. But thank you. Yeah, so I have a bunch of nonsense of books back here too. It's ones yeah. I wrote, but I, I know, I know, <laughs> shameless self promotion. But you know what? If you're not going to do it, who else is going to do it? That's right, right, right. You know, because you know nobody cares. It's true. It's true. Well, I care, but sometimes Listen, I care, Rob. Hundred <laughs> percent, and, and, and we owe it to this guy right here. That's right, Mr. Sims. Absolutely, Mr. Mr. Oz, uh, Steve <laughs> Sims. Uh, like I said, everybody, go back to episode seven. Go watch them. And anyway, Absolutely. if you guys are in Vegas, visit Courtney. Take him That's out. right. Yeah, take him. Go go watch him fly his drone, or you know, offer him some coffee, or buy him a beer. There you go. You know, just don't Absolutely. try to jump them in the street because you know they'll take you down. It's a bad idea. It's a bad <laughs> idea. I don't want to. Do <laughs> Thank you so much, Rob. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, and and for everybody, I hope you found episode one hundred uh, awesome. I know I did. I really enjoy the, the company of of Courtney, and and I I think he has some great perspective, and and you know I, I think he's going to great become a awesome, awesome, you know professional as he as he continues to do this and uh forget those 17 other thousand people in vegas just go to courtney and yeah, forget about those people i do <laughs> hey adios my friends and we'll Take see care, you on brother. the next episode all right man yeah. have a good one